Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to Intuition. So in today's video, we're going to be going over more NAPLEX calculation problems. Specifically, we're going to be going over empirical equations that we have to memorize and use to make those corrections. All right, stay tuned. Okay, in today's video, we're going to be answering three questions. So let's not waste any time. Let's dive right into it. All right, question number one. Question number one states, LP is a 54-year-old diabetic female patient who is being seen for a urinary tract infection on complicated cystitis. Her home medications are metformin 1,000 milligrams twice a day, Invulcana 100 milligrams once a day, and Lantus 10 units daily. She is five feet tall, weighs 65 kilograms, and her serum creatinine is 1.1 milligrams per deciliter. What drug treatment would you recommend for LP's infection? Okay, so in this question, it seems like there's a lot of details and moving parts involved, right? So let's start with the basic. The whole purpose of her coming to see us is for her to get treatment for the uncomplicated cystitis. So we need to know what drugs are typically used to treat such an infection. Well, according to the most updated guidelines, Macrobid nit or nitrofurantoin is the preferred drug, but we got to be careful and especially with these types of questions because they're giving us a lot of extra details because there must be a catch. There must be a catch involved to this type of question and that catch probably has to do something with renal function for this patient, which is why we're given serum creatinine concentration. So before we go ahead and choose Macrobid or nitrofurantoin as our answer, since that's typically first line medication for uncomplicated cystitis, Let's make sure that the patient's renal function is adequate enough to be able to give her this drug. When it comes to calculating creatinine clearance, the first thing that we wanna do is calculate the patient's ideal body weight. For a female patient, the equation for ideal body weight is 45.5 plus 2.3 times the total number of inches above five feet. And this is an equation that we all need to know right off the top of our heads, okay? Because it's definitely going to be on the test. So let's go ahead and figure this out for the patient. 45.5 plus 2.3, the patient is five feet, five inches tall. So she's five inches above five feet. So that's 2.3 times five. And when we plug this into our calculator, what do we get? We get 57 kilograms. So the patient's ideal body weight is 57 kilograms, okay? Now the patient actually weighs 65 kilograms. So she's a little overweight. But when it comes to the creatinine clearance equation, we're going to plug in the ideal body weight. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. What is the equation for creatinine clearance? That's the crowcroft golf equation, right? And this is an empirical equation, which means that you're not going to be able to derive this equation from basic principles. So we're stuck with it and it's just something that we have to memorize. With a lot of things in pharmacy, it's just memorization. So this is nothing new. This formula has numerator and a denominator. So let's go ahead and plug in the numerator. So for the numerator, it's 140 minus the patient's age, so that's 140 minus 54 times the ideal body weight. We just calculated that at 57 kilograms times 0 0.85. And this 0 0.85 only applies to female patients. So that's the numerator. And then we divide it by the denominator. The denominator is the serum creatinine concentration, which is 1.1 times a number 72. Where does that 72 come from? Don't know, right? It's an empirical equation. Just plug it in. We have our numerator divided by our denominator. We plug that into our calculator and what do we get? When we plug that into the calculator, we get 52.6 milligrams per deciliter. So that is the patient's creatinine clearance, 52.6. Is that renal function adequate enough to give the patient macrobid? No, the creatinine clearance cutoff for macrobid is 60. Macrobid is contraindicated in such a patient. So this patient's renal function is not adequate enough to give macrobid, which means that we must give the patient a different first line treatment for uncomplicated cystitis. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of the drug options to see which ones we can give her. Okay, so we have Bactrim double strength twice a day for three days. This is a good answer because Bactrim is an optional treatment for uncomplicated cystitis and the creatinine clearance cutoff for Bactrim is 30. So the patient has enough renal function to warrant giving her Bactrim. So that's a good answer. Avalox, typically not used to treat UTI. Fluoroquinolones are more broad spectrum antibiotics. So we don't want to use those 
for uncomplicated cystitis, which is not a severe infection. And answer choice D says to withhold antibiotics and recommend hydration, which is not that bad of an answer choice. Doctors tend to overtreat and overdiagnose UTI. Just because the patient has bacteria in their urine, automatically a lot of doctors see that as an infection and they give the patient antibiotics. The patient can have bacteria in their urine, but they don't have any symptoms, then we don't give them antibiotics. But this patient clearly had symptoms and she had enough symptoms to come in to see us today to get treatment, to get treatment for the infection. So we would not withhold antibiotics in this scenario. And the answer would be answer choice B, Bactrim double strength. All right, so let's go on to question number two. Question number two. Question number two states, a patient with a history of seizures who was treated with phenytoin has a free drug plasma concentration of six milligrams per liter. Typically, 90% of phenytoin is bound to albumin, but due to the patient's state of hypoalbuminemia, only 60% of phenytoin is bound to albumin. What is the corrected phenytoin concentration for this patient? Okay, so what's going on here? For the drug phenytoin, typically when a patient has normal albumin concentration, which is between four and like five or six, right? So about four is normal albumin concentration for a patient. So if a patient has albumin within normal range, phenytoin is is 90% bound to protein, to, al to the albumin proteins. But if you have kidney disease or if you have kidney failure, then you start to lose albumin protein in your urine. And as you lose albumin protein, then that frees up a lot of the phenytoin drug to be able to be free to bound to receptors and cause reactions to occur. So you can have the same amount of phenytoin concentration but if you have low albumin, then your effective phenytoin concentration actually goes up. Even though the actual concentration did not change, the effective concentration goes up. When it comes to calculating that effective concentration for patients who have low albumin, that equation is an empirical equation. And it's something that we have to memorize once again, just like the creatinine clearance equation. That equation is the actual phenytoin concentration divided by the albumin concentration times 0.1 plus 0.1. For this patient, we need to calculate what the actual concentration of phenytoin is for this patient and plug that concentration into our, into our empirical equation to get the corrected phenytoin concentration. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, for this patient, we're being told that the free concentration of phenytoin is six milligrams per liter. That is the free concentration of phenytoin. We're also told 60% of the phenytoin in the plasma is bound to protein. So if 60% of the total concentration is bound to protein, then that means that 40% of the total concentration is unbound. And we're also told that six milligrams per liter is unbound. So which means that six milligrams per liter corresponds to 40% of the total drug concentration. If six milligrams per liter is 40% of the total drug concentration, then what is the total drug concentration? Well, we just divide six milligrams per liter by 0.4, right? And what concentration does that give us? That gives us a total concentration of 15 milligrams per liter. So that is the actual concentration of phenytoin in the patient's body. So now we can go ahead and plug that in to our empirical equation to get the corrected or the effective concentration of phenytoin. So we have 15 milligrams per liter in the numerator divided by the albumin concentration, which is 2.2 times 0.1 plus 0.1. Plug that into our calculator and what do we get? We get 46.88 milligrams per liter. And that is the effective concentration of phenytoin in the patient's body. Our answer will be answer choice C, 47, 47 milligrams per liter. All right, so let's go on to question number three. All right, question number three. Question number three states, the previous patient with an albumin concentration of 2.2 grams per deciliter also has a total calcium concentration of 8.3 milligrams per deciliter. What is the corrected calcium concentration for this patient? This question is dealing with the same patient from question two, right? And we're being asked the same question basically, except that this time, instead of for phenytoin, it's for calcium. Calcium is also a highly protein bound chemical and we therefore need to also use an empirical equation to correct, to correct for low albumin concentrations. But here's the thing, the corrected concentration equation for calcium is completely different from the corrected concentration equation for phenytoin. And why is that? Makes no sense to me, but whatever, right? That's just the way it is. So unfortunately, we have to memorize another corrected concentration equation for calcium 
Now, what is that equation? Equation for calcium is equal to 0.8 times the difference between four and the patient's albumin concentration plus the patient's actual calcium concentration. Once we know this equation, it's just plug in, right? We can just go ahead and plug in. So we have 0.8 times four minus 2.2 plus 8.3, which is the actual patient's concentration. And we plug this into our calculators. And what do we get when we plug this in? When we plug this into the calculator, we get 9.74. We get 9.74 milligrams per deciliter, which means that our answer is answer choice B, 9.74, okay? All right, so there you have it. So these types of questions, they're bound to come up on the exam and they're pretty straightforward, but you need to remember what these equations mean and how to use them properly, okay? So you don't wanna make mistakes doing these types of questions because they should be easy points for you. All right, so with that said, I hope you guys learned something from the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, become part of our family. And as always, keep watching and I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye-bye.